You can't put a price on loyalty or friendship, but the tie that binds Russia's richest men to Vladimir Putin and vice versa, well, that is very much all about price. And the price of backing Putin in his bid to conquer Ukraine just keeps getting more expensive. Since we last checked on the impact of Western sanctions on Russia's super rich, at least five of Putin's top enablers and cronies have taken it in the teeth. These are the business tycoons, um, a lawmaker, even a TV host, who could only watch and complain over the weekend as authorities in Italy seized their villas and their yachts worth more than $150 million. Uh, this man, a mining billionaire named Alisher Uzmanov, he lost his $20 million villa in Sardinia. And that's not all. <laughs> that happened just days after Germany blocked his $600 million yacht from leaving a Hamburg shipyard. Ouch. Putin, for his part, he managed to get his own yacht, the Graceful, out of Hamburg two weeks before he invaded Ukraine, and that was certainly very clever. For the record, the Russian leader is among the 50-plus individuals who are personally sanctioned by the U.S., the U.K., and the E.U., but none of Putin's stuff has been seized yet. Part of the problem with seizing any Russian assets is proving who owns them, and that's one reason the U.S. hasn't seized anything yet. A measure called the Yachts for Ukraine Act would not only allow the feds to seize any Russian property worth more than $5 million, but to sell it and just hand over the proceeds to Ukraine. We're going to keep you posted if and when that happens. In the meantime, I want to bring in Dana Kennedy. She's a reporter for the New York Post who's been covering Ukraine and Moscow and sanctions for quite some time. These are all really, really impressive, uh, especially the list this weekend, especially the one that was like George Clooney's neighbor you know, on Lake Como, uh, the TV star who complained on TV that I didn't, well, shouldn't have been part of this. But is it having any actual pragmatic effect on Putin himself? Well, two things. One, a lot of these yachts are big toys for show. You know, I lived in the south of France for a very long time, Ashley, so I was around uh, a lot of these super yachts, the people who worked on them, did stories about them. And the actual time these oligarchs spend on the yachts is not a lot. They really are big, big toys, so it's not like they're missing going fishing for the weekend. I think it looks bad on a big, uh, big PR level for Putin. It looks like uh, his best friends are losing all these big toys. But, you know, I'm a little cynical. These guys are close to him and you have to figure they were doing a lot of stuff they were either, either moving some of the yachts that we haven't heard of they were putting money offshore i don't think all of them were caught totally flat-footed that's amazing that they don't miss those toys i just salivate and there's one i wanted to ask you about i don't know if you know anything about it because the rest of us sure can't find out much about it other than i think its name and it's tricky to pronounce the Sheharadze supposed to be parked in Italy and the reports are that the nameplate is covered up and that as soon as it was at dock uh, up went a big old steel wall like a metallic barrier so people couldn't see it up close onlookers couldn't get close um, I guess they're investigating but do we have any idea who this one belongs to? look at that thing it's it's like longer than a guided <laughs> missile destroyer it's about 700 million yeah, dollars yeah. Dana would you even really want to be i've been on some of these because like i said i did work in this area oddly enough for so long but no we don't know yet who is the owner of this and as you said there are some rumors that it could be putin's yacht himself i really doubt he would leave that yacht just sitting there literally like a sitting duck if it were his but also ashley from living down there for so long i can tell you all these guys whether it's people from the middle east or russians they were known to totally obfuscate the ownership of their villas of their yachts, pretty much everything. In sharp contrast to back like in the 60s, remember Aristotle Onassis had a yacht that seems quaint. It seems like a rowboat in comparison, the Christina, which actually is is docked in Monaco still. I've been on it. But back in the in that day, they loved you to know who owned what. Now they they really, really don't. And they're, you know, a lot of these guys are buying them as write-offs in their own way and like I said, big toys. And yet it's so weird that they want them for show. So now what the authorities are doing is they're boarding and they're demanding answers of captains, meaning it's on you, pal, who's your boss, which I think is amazing. Yeah, these are guys, the from, these are guys from Monteve or something. 
Right, right. So I thought it was interesting when the Panama Papers sort of blew open uh, all these shell companies out of Panama that were, you know, a, a law firm down there uh, that had opened 200,000 shell companies to hide these assets. They're starting to be a little less secretive. But but in the case of, say, that that Shehrazade, um, is this what's making things slow for the U.S., the, the, the shroud of secrecy on all of these assets? Because I would have expected the U.S. would have been picking these things off like popcorn. Yeah, but there are not as many here. I mean, don't forget, there's still, I mean, they call the UK London, or they call London, London grad, and the Riviera, and Italy. There's still likely to be more of these yachts and villas there. I mean, we know that there's Russian and Arab money in Manhattan and New York City, but they've clamped down recently in, in the last, like, four years on laws saying you can't just buy a billion-dollar apartment here with a shell company. They don't have as much, uh, Ashley, parked over here as they do in Europe. And again, you know, the Riviera, Riviera, London, all that, that's still very, very prestigious and goes along with what all, a lot of this sort of new kind of trashy Russian money um, post-Soviet goes for, as opposed to Fort Lauderdale. You know, it doesn't have the same zing to it. I have this image in my head, don't ask me why, of George Clooney in a bathrobe out on his, like, uh, balcony with a coffee cup watching his neighbor's <laughs> place get seized on Lake Como. Dana Kennedy, thank you so much. Good to see you again, my friend. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.